Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to go through the solution to an exercise on the Cournot model of oligopoly. If you haven't attempted the problem already, I recommend you stop the video here, try the problem, and then come back when you're done. I've written out our given information. We have our demand function q of p equals 12 minus p, and our two cost functions c1 of q1 equals 4q1, and c2 of q2 equals 2q2. Since the problem stated that our two firms are quantity setters, that means that we have a Cournot oligopoly model. Since the firms set quantities, we need to get the entire problem in terms of the quantities. That means we're going to have to solve our demand function for p and turn it into an inverse demand function. This is a relatively simple demand function where all we need to do is add p to both sides and subtract q from both sides to get p of q equals 12 minus q. Big Q is the total market quantity, which is going to be the sum of the individual firm's quantity. So we're going to have big Q equals Q1 plus Q2. So we're going to substitute that in. So we'll get P of Q1, Q2 equals 12 minus Q1 minus Q2. Remember that we have to distribute the minus sign here. So it's going to be minus both of the individual firm's quantities. Now that we have everything in terms of Q1 and Q2, we're now ready to write out the profit functions for each firm. I'll start with firm one. Pi one is firm one's profit. As always, profit is total revenue minus total cost. Total revenue, price times quantity. Price, 12 minus Q1 minus Q2, comes from our price equation, the inverse demand function, right above that. Multiply that by firm one's quantity and subtract firm one's total cost for Q1. Moving over to firm two, price times quantity again. This time remembering to write Q2 for firm two and minus firm two's total cost to Q2. We'll multiply this whole thing out. 12 times Q1, 12 Q1, and we have a minus four Q1 here. So those combine into eight Q1. We've got minus Q1 squared and we've got minus Q1, Q2. Over here for firm two, we can do the same thing. 12 Q2 minus two Q2 is 10 Q2. And then we have the rest of them, minus Q1, Q2, minus Q2 squared. Just cleaning this up a little bit to make the math easier later. We're now ready to take the first order conditions. Firm one's first order condition, we take the partial derivative of pi one with respect to Q1, since Q1 is the variable that firm one is actually able to control, that gives us eight minus two Q1 minus Q2, and set it equal to zero. Over here for firm two, we take the partial of pi two with respect to Q2, which is 10 minus Q1 minus two Q2 equals zero. We're almost done with part A of the problem, which asks us to find the best response functions. For firm one's best response function, we need to solve firm one's first order condition for Q1. So I'm going to add Q1 to both sides, a two Q1 equals eight minus Q2, and then divide everything by two. So we'll get Q1 star for the best response function equals four minus Q2 over two. This tells us firm one's plan for what quantity they should produce for any possible Q2 that firm two is gonna throw at them. We'll do the same thing for firm two, solving their first order condition for Q2. I'll add two Q2 to both sides, and then divide both sides by two for our best response, five minus Q1 over two. That takes us to the end of part A of the problem. For part B, we need to solve for the Nash equilibrium quantities and the market price. The best response functions give us what we need for that, a system of equations with two equations and two unknowns. So we'll use substitution to solve. I'm going to take firm one's best response function, Q1 equals four minus Q2 over two, and I'm going to plug in Q2 from firm two's best response function. So we'll get five, minus q1 over two, and have that whole thing divided by two. 
We'll multiply everything by 2. 2q1 equals 8 minus 5 minus q1 over 2. Next step, we distribute the minus sign. We get 8 minus 5 is 3, and then plus q1 over 2, since there's two minus signs there, they become a plus. Subtract q1 over 2 from both sides to get 3 halves q1 equals 3. Multiply both sides by 2 thirds, we get q1 equals 2. We now plug that back into firm 2's best response function to get q2 equals 5 minus 2 over 2, which is 4. We now know the Nash equilibrium quantities for each firm. We can then plug them into the inverse demand function to figure out the price. So we get P equals 12 minus Q1, which is 2, minus Q2, which is 4, and that gives us a price of 6. That's all the information we needed for Part B of the problem. Part C asks us to figure out the profit. We'll start with Firm 1. Firm 1's profit is their revenue minus cost. Revenue is a price of 6 times a quantity of 2 minus total cost of 4q1, which is 2, and that comes out to 4. For firm 2, same thing, price times quantity, but quantity is now 4, and the total cost 2 times 4, which is 16. The last part of the problem, part D, asks us what would happen if Firm 2 bought out Firm 1 and shut them down. If that happened, Firm 2 would now be a monopoly, so they're going to maximize profit accordingly. Since Firm 1 is not operating at all anymore, we only have one profit function. Again, we write out revenue minus cost. Their price is 12 minus big Q, since we don't have to divide them up anymore. Price times quantity minus total cost, which is 2 Q, which comes from firm 2's cost function. We'll multiply that out, which will give us 10 Q minus Q squared. First order condition, we don't have to use partial derivatives anymore since we only have one Q. It's going to be 10 minus 2 Q equals 0. Add 2 Q to both sides and solve for Q equals 5. The price will be 12 minus 5 using the inverse demand function, and the firm acting as a monopoly will make a profit of 7 times 5, that's our total revenue, with a total cost of 2 times 5. This comes out to a total of 25. We can see that operating as a monopoly, firm 2 would make considerably more profit than what they would have as part of the duopoly, 25 versus 16. The final question asks, how much would Firm 2 be willing to pay to buy out Firm 1 and become a monopoly. If they didn't buy them out, they would get 16. If they do, they would get 25. So the most they would be willing to pay would be 25 minus 16, which is 9. Since Firm 1 would get a profit of 4 by continuing to operate as part of the duopoly, they would be willing to pay anything above 4, so there's room in there to make a deal. If, for example, Firm 2 bought out Firm 1 for a price of 5, then both firms would be better off. To know what price they would end up with is a completely separate discussion, though, that is outside the scope of this video. If you have any questions about what we did cover here, feel free to let me know. Thanks for watching.